Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fat Real Estate Checks. I'm joined today with uh, Frank Galluccio, Gabriel Araish, and myself, Marco Kozlowski, your semi-fearless leader, where we're going to be discussing uh, strategies, techniques on how to uh, not only gain wealth using skills instead of money, but also all the uh, fun things in between, mindset and anything that you need uh, to develop some uh, either in inner skills or outer skills that will help you achieve a better future and uh, ha also a better today and have more fun in life. Uh, if you're a person that puts FU in fun, then this is definitely not going to be the right podcast for you. And if you enjoy having fun and making tons of money at the same time, uh, definitely like us, follow us, uh, listen to the, at least the first 10 episodes because that's that's really the crux of how uh, we get uh, asset-based lending to uh, finance all of our deals because if you buy it at the right price, you never need your own money to buy assets. And of course, uh, all these skills that are necessary in between that are going to be all the other episodes, the almost 100 episodes that we have up to this point. And we are very blessed for your great comments. We have over 300 uh, five-star reviews, which is phenomenal. I've uh, been doing this for less than a year now, and I'm super stoked to um, continue this journey with you. And um, it's been a lot of fun, and I really appreciate you, the listener, for uh, just being there for us. And of course, Frank and Gabe for just being as amazing as well, amazing humans um, along the way. The my brothers from another mother. So uh, today we're going to talk about, what are we going to talk about, boys? What is our topic today? It is going to be changing our strategy as times change. Um, very interestingly, uh, I'm not sure when you're going to be listening to this, whether it's fresh out of the gate or maybe in a year from now or even three years from now, but no matter at what point you're going to be listening to this episode, there is always going to be a market shift. Something is going to be happening. Uh, at, at this point, the market is very, very hot. Uh, people are overbidding, overpaying for properties as far as we're concerned. Uh, it's, it's bananas. Uh, if, you know, it could be a, a property that's worth a million and people are buying it for 1.1, 1.2, which makes absolutely no sense. Uh, we'll discuss that in a second. Um, and you know, there's, there's a few reasons why this is happening right now and why it's exciting for us uh, at this point as well. So we're gonna get into that. I don't think this is a discussion I've actually had with Frank and Gabe yet. So this is gonna be a very fun, organic conversation on the market, what we're doing now versus what we're doing before and why it's very exciting at this point. So um, I don't know who wants to go first, but let's do this. I can go first, that's fine. Uh, so uh, for, for me, yes, there's obviously, um, just recently, I've been looking at, you know, we, we've been, you know, we, we, we advocating, we trying to market for multifamilies. And I know that arena has dried up in certain states, uh, certain areas, certain pockets. Um, so it got me thinking, I know, Gabe, we were talking about this not too long ago. And it got me thinking, then, you know, you, you always like to send these news articles or whatever. I don't know where you get them from, but uh, you got a lot of time on your hands for a young chap like yourself. But, uh, uh, they're but, fed but, to you, me. They're fed to me. Fed to you. <laughs> young whippersnapper. But but one of them caught my eye. I think it was the one that you sent me, where they were saying that they're um, post postponing, they're deferring <laughs> uh, foreclosures, lenders to foreclose on properties in 2021. They're deferring it to 2022. Uh, so this is the government talking here. So they're like, you know what, lenders, uh, if you're in arrears and they're not paying you, uh, you got to suck it up for the next six seven months till 2022. So number one, it's not fair to that lender. <laughs> whether it's institution or private because some of these lenders are private yep and can you imagine they can't even foreclose on a property there where someone's either a taking advantage and they're not paying and it's really unfair but i want to get into that the point is they deferred the foreclosures to 2022 so what's that going to create now um within these next you know few months or whatever before the end of the year and i was like man i was like people know who the those that are underwater or in arrears they know they're under in arrears so for, for, for myself, when I'm looking at it, it's like, well, if I put myself in those guys' shoes, if I own a property and I'm in arrears and maybe I have 20, 30, 40, even 50,000 in equity, they're not going to, the likelihood of them seeing that equity at the end of the day, if that institution or private lender foreclosed on them is zero. It's going to be a fat chance. They're not going six months. They're going to milk everything in legal fees, cost, court fees, and all that jazz. So for, for myself, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe residential is in right now because if I can get to these people before that lender foreclose on them 
and offer them a carrot, offer them a nugget to cash out a little bit on their equity and make that arrears whole, maybe that's another uh, opportunity, another strategy uh, that you can look at. And that's what I'm trying to experiment right now. I haven't deep dived into it, but uh, again, this is fresh off the press. Uh, but that's where I see it going. And also in, we were just talking about it today. Um, if you can't, if there's no multifamilies out there that are operational, whatever, then you're going to have to look at something that you can do uh, major force appreciation, major upside. So uh, like is a major repair. So you hold off. So you, you buy something, you, you, you rehab it, you fix it over the next six, seven months. And then you, you know, it's harvest time at that point uh, in a year's time or whatever the case is. You have to be careful uh, though in, in doing that. So just a, a side note that if you're going to get yes. a building that's like, uh, I know Gabe is looking at a one that's just around a hundred units and uh, you're doing a rehab job like that. The money's available if you know what you're doing. If you don't, you can partner with someone that knows what they're doing if you find the deal. Uh, so you're still a zero, you know, zero entry cost. But just know that if you don't have experience, you're going to have your ass handed to you. Be careful. And and before we, we, we get into the, I guess, any other strategies, if it's a strategy uh, discussion, it's understanding why this is happening right now. So a lot of it is is based on right now it's cheap money, right? Uh, you know, you can get mortgages for under 2%. I know uh, you can also get maybe some SBA loans. I, I, I think I read something where they're, they're giving away up to like 90, 95% financing on some of these things at ri ridiculously low interest rates. So what happens typically is when interest rates go down, you know, real estate values goes up, right? It's just because you, you can get more leverage on your money. You can, you can, your payments are going to be smaller for a larger, a larger debt. So uh, it's it's that's that's a major part of this. Now, obviously, there's the fact that there's uh, also an issue with uh, foreclosures. There's also an issue with uh, there's a lot of tenants that that can't pay. Uh, some probably don't want to pay, but a lot of them can't pay, and and that's that's put us in a position where. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a there's a large supply right now of of money, and there's a, 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 that supply needs to go somewhere. It most of it is going into real estate. A lot of it's going to real estate now because of the leverage factor. Do you guys remember what happened in 06, 07? There was a lot of money. People, these ninja loans, you know, no income, no verification loans, you know, and it's all the money went in. And then as soon as the tipping point happened, it crashed. And even with SBA, for example, I'm really glad you brought this up because SBA has a program which is almost 95% financing or 15% uh, down, but you, they've lowered their limits on, on experience and how much reserves. And so they've basically made it a lot easier for people to buy at extremely low interest rates. So someone comes in with a fairly low down and this, th this expires, uh, I'm told, in, uh, at the end of September. And so there's going to be all this activity up to that point and then... When the money's easy, as you said, there's a supply and demand issue, so I can get I can get paid. Uh, I, I mean, I can buy this property, and I don't need a lot of money. I don't need a lot of experience. Buy, 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 which is driving the prices up. So now prices are going up, so they're overpaying for a property. And what do you think is going to happen when a that program is over, and then you have these people that really don't know what to do to how, what they're doing? The ex they don't have the experience to to manage these things properly. They've gotten the money, but they don't have the legs necessary to be able to carry it for a very long period of time. Maybe they have 15% equity that they were able to borrow or beg, borrow, steal, or do whatever they can with. And now the market t turns because it has to, right? What, what do you think is going to happen to that SBA loan, low interest rate, and the wheels are going to start falling off the wagon. People are going to start, they, they don't know how to manage the property well. They haven't picked the right property manager. They don't have the skill sets to be able to hold on to it for a long period of time. Now you have an upside down property, which is going to be amazing for us. So I'm licking my chops right now because of what's happening. People are diving into assets that don't make any sense to buy. And I know that when the market shifts again, that's when we're really going to really going to do well. Like I am so excited for what's coming. So and if and remember, if you go back to the some of the earlier podcasts, we mentioned this a lot. There's no, there's two things that are going to fuck you in real estate. It's buying it wrong and bad management. And when you have this type of loan, you're, you're getting that's that's like, you know, you're getting both here. You're, you're buying it wrong because you're, you know, some people are paying over value just to get the property. There's bidding wars going on these properties. And then if they have no experience or less experience in managing these larger assets, you know, that's that's just going to be, you know, exactly what we, we've been preaching for the last whatever, how many episodes we've been we've been discussing. They're doing both things wrong. And that's, you know, unfortunate for them. But 
you know that's that's why we're educating here we we want we don't want you to make the same mistakes so until that tsunami comes what do we, what 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 do you suggest we what do you say we do <laughs> so because it is well it is going to you're absolutely right it's 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 free money as far as i'm concerned i i know my um i had a line of credit and uh, they wanted to convert some of that to to a mortgage the bank they go oh you know record breaking interest low 1.15 like that's 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 stupid sick uh, yeah. low yeah. uh 1.15 uh, but and, and here's the problem. Yeah, people are lining up to to go to these open houses. People are overbidding and whatever. If there's even a, a 0.5 or a one percent uh, differential increase in interest rates, which you know it's going to go up, it's not going to stay here. Uh, you know it's going to go up. Most of these people, when you know, all of a sudden their mortgage payments go from twenty five hundred bucks a month, or whatever, to, to to like four. Excuse me, to like four thousand dollars. They're out. It's choking They're you done. up. I was. It was choking me up. I was, <laughs> but it, but it's nuts when I see these people lining up, and I was like, "What the heck?" And and the realtors know that, and the sellers know that. That's why it's a huge sellers market right now. Uh, but who knows where those sellers are going after they sell? Maybe they're maybe they're retiring. Unemployment <laughs> at an all time high. Mortgages at an all time low, and real estate markets high. So if no one's working, everyone's buying real estate. How is that? That that's a recipe for complete disaster. disaster. And now the government's saying, "Hey, no more moratorium until 2022." That that at, that has to stop at one point. And as soon as as soon as that is lifted, it's going to be hell. painful. It's going to be hell. It's going to be it's going to be tw- it's going to be 2008 all over again. And the the good thing is you can actually now predict it. But it's going to be 2008, I think, before that, because when when someone is losing money consistently on a property because they don't know how to, or they have a management company, they, they think, okay, I'll just get a management company because I, I can. And that management company will try to screw you because that's just what happens, right? There are very specific, very specific things that you have to find in a management company and everyone can manage property, but they'll nickel and dime you on a lot of things. They'll not take care of it like they should. There's a whole process around getting the right management team. And if they are not doing it well, just like you know Gabe said, it will completely fuck you. And if you are overpaying, as Gabe said, with bad management, you're really going to be in a, in a bad spot. So I'm watching this with excitement. So are we going to overpay on properties, which is what many do, right? I want a deal. I want a deal. I want a deal. And is it the deal that you want or is it the right deal that you want? Which one is it? Like when stocks are going bananas up, uh, you know, you have the advantage that you can buy and sell, buy and sell very quickly. But in real estate, it's a little bit different. You have to, there's a longer period of buying and selling. So if you're, if you buy at the wrong time and then you're caught, you're screwed. So you have to be very, very careful. Yeah. And you can't buy the dip to average that property out, right? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. There's, so there's, it's a different strategy where I, I would rather just be, just continue process, you know, creating an impasse so we can, you know, get the right person. And just to be clear, Someone is going to go through, there, there are five Ds. We've talked about this before, you know, divorce, debt, disease, uh, displacement, and uh, death. And anyone that's encountering one of those five Ds, no matter what the market is doing, there's always going to be someone that needs to sell quickly, no matter what, right? Someone can't wait for an SBA loan that l- closes in 90 days. And you know, they can get full price in 90 days. We just had a situation where someone has um, terminal cancer and they need to close in 30 days. So anyone with financing is out. So they would rather get less money and know it's going to close in 30 days than have to deal with it, you know, posthumously because they can't sign the closing documents when they're dead and they don't want the, that burden on their kids. So they really want to get this thing closed out quickly and they it's not how much money they get because they're not going to use it anyway. So there's always going to be someone that needs to sell quickly, which is the service that we provide anyway. So are we going to have uh, is it going to be a little bit more difficult in a hot ascending market? Sure, but I don't care because I'll still get that deal here and there. And then when the market really turns, holy shit, when you know what you're doing, you're, gonna, you're just gonna make out like a banshee. Because if you can do it when it's hard, you can do it, because it is harder now than it was six months a year ago, not denying that. Absolutely. But when I say hard, it's not hard for those that have the skills. It's harder for those that are learning the process. But do you wanna learn it when it's really hard? Do you wanna have a hard childhood and an easy life? Because those that have generally, you know that if you're hugged all the time told how amazing you are you're the best everything that you do is the absolute number one and you are you know flawless and you're the best child that ever lived and you can do that anything, describes me you know and then you, you you go into the world and everyone shits on you and now you need medication because you realize how 
life is actually a lot harder than you were told, right? <laughs> and you know, now you're you're a depressed teenager because you're not as you know, it's not as easy as you were led to believe. So the harder your the beginning is, the easier your, the end of the life is. So anyway, with that said, this is not a parenting show. Uh, you know, with that said, it's it's um, it's a really good time to learn when it's difficult because when it actually does shift, it's going to be like taking candy from a baby. People are just going to want to get out of these loans. And again, these loans are like one and a half, two, three percent, free money, guys, free money. This is. This is Unbelievable. This is where you prone patience, and that's why it's called Ooh, patience. I'm going to use right. that. Yeah. Ah. Patience. P A Y. You Look just you just made me just tingle all over, buddy. Uh, oh, we're we're going to need a commercial break here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I just uh, I just got a little excited. That's really good. Yes. Be why patient, guys. Yeah. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Well, it's being patient, but also like what Mark was saying is is still go at it in the market. Yes, it's going to be a lot tougher. You know, instead of you know landing two or three properties, maybe you land one good one during yeah. these hard times or harder times, and you know you're you're sharpening your axe for when it is time to, you know, this whole thing's going to cascade. Um, and it has to. Yeah. There's no. There's no. It's impossible for it not to. With a moratorium on foreclosure, if you're not paying your mortgage, the lender has to take it back at one point. They have to. Yeah, that's in the documentation that you sign, right? Like this is going to happen, There's, and that's their duty as a bank is to do that. And if for for the government to even step in doesn't make sense because no, I, I don't think it's constitute. Well, we're getting into a whole. It, other, it's you know. it's not fair, but the inevitable is coming. That's that's the the overall uh, thing. The, the inevitable will come, whether it's in six months, four months, uh, early two thousand twenty two. Uh, the inevitable is coming for those that are in arrears. People are taking back their shit, uh, and I would too. Um, so. And, and this is, it's going to be another shift, basically. So you can actually prepare now for a shift that's going to happen. In the meantime, you can do other things, but you can still plant or plant your seeds for that moment when that shift occurs. It, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. I can't mm -hmm. wait. I can't wait. But anyway, so when, so when the market goes up, you're focused on those that really need to sell quickly. You're not going to compete with the, the those that have access to money or you know that that can, that the seller that can wait 90 days, and you know there's a bidding war on their asset, and they don't just they don't give a shit when it sells. That's not our customer anyway. We want someone that wants to sell quickly for you know for a discount. Someone that is willing to exchange speed for equity. And again, no matter where that is in the cycle, whether it's super hot or slow, someone's always going to need money quickly in exchange for um you know for equity that's why pawn shops exist in any economic cycle there's no pawn shop that goes out of business when the economy is good or the economy is bad when the economy is bad they do better because people that's need it. more money so right now again you know it's it's a little hotter than it was six months ago cool no problem you know we're going to focus on what our core uh, our, our core uh, customers are anyway and when it goes down which is going to happen uh, and then we can take over debt on very low interest property. And you know, for those that we don't think that understand that every debt can be taken over. Even if there's a due on sale clause, no matter what it is, I have a, whole, a class called Ninja Creative Financing and we have like, I think 30 ways of doing it. Uh, just a, a lot of ways of taking over debt <clears throat> and uh, just scooping up that loan that a very low interest rate and making out like banshees and getting the right management in to uh, really optimize the property. And that's how we buy a lot of our property actually. So that's going to be optimum for that. So if the prop if the market's going up, there's an opportunity. If the market's going down, there's an opportunity. If the market's flat. Opportunity. Opportunity. <laughs> There's always an opportunity and it's it's shifting as the, the the market shifts and and being excited to see what's going to happen and not being worried just riding riding whatever wave is 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 on right now and you, you don't have to fight it you don't have to be you know resistant to it it's ride the wave that you're in right now and have fun with it anything else to add to that boys no i think we've uh, pretty no, much hit i, on I think we covered it. everything yeah all right well there you go so adapt 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 in the jungle, it's not the strongest that survive, it's actually the most adaptable that do. So the more you adapt, the more you understand the shifts, the more you play with those shifts and ride the shifts, the better you're going to do. And we're looking forward to giving you the skill sets necessary to ride that shift so you can have as much money as you choose today, uh, tomorrow, and to leave to, for your um, for, for generational wealth, to really live, leave a legacy for you and your family. So I appreciate you, the listener. Like it, love it, share it. And of course, uh, thank you for listening. And I'm looking forward to a phenomenal year for yourself and your family. You take care. Bye for now.
If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for a life starts by finding deals, and it's easier than you think. Simply go to getdealsbytuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, this course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to getdealsbytuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.